voting is a tool. It is not the answer. It is not the end all be all. And, and you know, um, Vice Presidential Candidate Barack talks about that in the piece I referenced earlier. It's it's a tool. It, it's And we use tools to build. Right. And we have to be active and engaged. And it's not enough that I know to vote, but I let my five people down a block not vote. We have to do it in mass and in numbers because as we grow support, in order to grow power, we have to be able to leverage our numbers because we may not have the money and influence in the same way, but we have the numbers. We have bodies, we have people, we have knowledge, we have power. And so we have to figure out a way to make that happen and grow, not just on, you know, national calls and all these great grandeurs and letters, you know, that we write on behalf of the left or whatever, but, but in real actual organizational grassroots local level change, we have to support organizations that, that are coming at, coming together, that are building to address these issues. Voter education, outreach and support is where we need to be putting some of our efforts. No, it's not the end all be all. No, no, that you don't drop everything else you're working on. But at the same time, it really absolutely does matter. And in a lot of cases, we have Republican judges, Republican, and it's not just that it's it's not just along party lines, but Republicans have an increasingly problematic history with coming down on the wrong side of issues, particularly when it comes to issues of voting rights, well, civil rights and human rights in general. And don't give me that old with Republicans and the party of Lincoln, yo. One day I'm just gonna have to go off about Lincoln. I'll probably just read my son's fifth grade paper that he wrote about Lincoln because clearly some of you aren't as smart as a fifth grader. <laughs> but but that's 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 it. Growing support and, or growing power. I mean, what are we doing? It's great that we we can get the numbers and bodies out there, but what are we doing to grow the power? What are we doing to grow the leverage that we need to actually turn the tide and move beyond this incremental one step forward, three steps back BS that we've been in with the existing parties for all this time? So I haven't done this yet. Um, ben has done it, and this does not mean that I'm all of a sudden gonna be blowing rainbows up her butt, but. Um, if you are somebody and you feel that you can't vote for either the two main party candidates or you're on the fence about it, you're not really sure what to do, they're predicting Hillary's going to win and blow it out anyway. Vote for Jill Stein. Get the Green Party to that 5%. I'm voting for Jill Stein here in Georgia. Unfortunately, it's a write-in, but it is she is actually a write-in. Um, I just got to make sure I, I got to make sure I'm not sure if I have to write both their names in or how that works, but Jill Stein is a write-in here in Georgia. I'm voting for Jill Stein. I believe my mom and them is voting for Jill Stein too. Not sure. Can't speak for my mom, but I'm voting for Jill Stein. I'm writing her in. Jane and the Green Party said five percent. I do have my issues that I've spoken about. Um, you know, uh, there's a piece I think from back in like January where the 2008 vice presidential candidate um, Rosa Clemente even talks about some of the persisting issues of liberal racism that does continue to exist in the Green Party. I mean, every party has their issues. It's a political party. Everything has their issues. But I do think that there is value. And I think here in Georgia, it's either if they get 2% of the, I think it's 2% of the vote, they'll have ballot access in 2018. And that's what's really important. Because that's what we keep talking about, how it's important to get options and it's important to make changes. Well, you got to get out and vote. But it's not enough for you to get out and vote. You actually got to help make sure other people are educated about the issues and the possibilities and getting out and vote. Because what's happening right now is we have a Democratic Party that has been more than happy to swing right and pick up all these Republicans. And yeah, they're going to win the presidency, but they're hammered. They're about to hemorrhage more seats because they're not they're not paying attention to down ballots. They're not organizing on a block like they need to. And that's where us, the progressives, the left, that's where we can pick up the slack and really, really get an end. So... I'm going to leave you with that note, but yes, I have finally said it. Um, we need to get, we need to help get the Green Party to that 5%. Um, because see, nationwide, like see, it, it's doable. Um, and I think that instead of trying to turn voters, which I think is something that people have been doing all wrong all along, actually get out there. There are people who are not interested in voting because they don't believe the system works for them. Reach out to people in your community, in your world. You know what I'm saying? There are people who might be interested in hearing some of the stuff that Dr. Stein and, and, and Dr. Barack are talking about. Um, you know what I'm saying? There, there's stuff that they might want they want to hear about the Stein Barack ticket. Like a lot of people still don't know about them. So so do what you can, get out there, flyer. I mean, it, it's you know, pitching. And I know a lot of us donated money to Bernie and kind of tapped out now. 
it don't take nothing to do, to print off a couple of half sheet, you know, get some information of flyers, half sheet them, print them off real quick. Might cost you like four dollars. Hand them out at the train station, hand them out like on your way to work, put them on people's. I mean, do it or just like I said, talk to people that you know. Um, because if people are on the fence, because there are quite a few people out there who are still like, I don't know if I want to be involved, I don't even know if I feel like voting. I mean, definitely also learn figure out what's on your ballot. Look at what's on your ballot and pay attention. Like I said, here in Georgia, we have four amendments. There's some other special provisions I think we have for Atlanta specifically. You know, look at look at a sample ballot to see what the wording is, because that's been one of the big things here with the, uh, uh, the OSD here. Um, is the fact that the wording is very tricky. And that's one of the biggest complaints. So they've been trying to like do outreach around even the wording and understanding. So know who the different people are on your, on your ballot. Like for all these other different election, elected positions, who's running for your sheriff? That knucklehead Clark up in Wisconsin continues to run for sheriff. And apparently I've been told that he does not run unopposed. He actually does have a challenger at times when he runs and he still wins. That's something, that's a strategy that needs to happen. Right now, Color of, Ch color of Change, um, you may have seen their uh, petitions, colorofchange.org. They actually have a strategy where they're looking at, they're targeting certain district attorney races right now and trying to leverage support around there. So there are a lot of organizations out there. You may see people talk about, you know, they really feel like they need to defeat Trump, but don't just get so caught up in people using that language, right? That you don't look beyond to see what they're actually doing. Because I really do think that that mentality that he has absolutely has to be stumped out. And voting against Trump, voting for Jill Stein is a vote against Trump. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It's a vote against imperialism. It's a vote against American exceptionalism. Your voice, your vote. Like seriously, we 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 have an opportunity in this election cycle. Um, and I hope if it and, and I'm gonna say this, if it does not turn out, you know, as well as people hope. You know, in terms of getting to this five percent, work with the Green Party so that in the next several, in the next few cycles, you know, this midterm election that will be coming up, and then the next presidential election that we're even in an even stronger position than before. I mean, we got to keep working at it, right? Because nobody's just going to let you. Like when everyone's like, "Well, we need to change the rules. We need to do this." Well, if you're not sitting on any of them committees, if you're not in any of them, in any of them rooms, how are you going to change something that you don't have privy to? You have to find a way to insert your process and make it happen.